All right, Jason Rona here with J Concepts. We're back in the J Concepts garage with Hannah Hardison. And uh, we want to talk about a little bit today during the vlog here about a lot of events that uh, we've been going to recently. And, uh, you know, it's been a stacked schedule, stacked calendar. Uh, you know, we, we did the end of uh, 2021. We kind of wrapped that up with our California tour. Uh, Hannah worked on a, a video for that. We got that up here on, on YouTube. But, but Hannah, we... We got through some races early in the sea in the season, and then we got all the way back out to California for the Dirt Nitro Challenge, and uh, you just wrapped up a video uh, of the whole event uh, for us on YouTube, and um, talk to us a little bit about uh, being at the event and then kind of getting some of this behind the scenes action. Obviously, Ryan Mayfield won the eight skill buggy and the truggy class. Uh, David Ronafolk won the e buggy class, but uh, tell us about kind of getting some behind the scenes action here and uh, it's a long event. Yeah, so this event is kind of nice because at least it's like kind of a long event. So it gives us a lot of time to do all the normal um, like content that we produce and then kind of add on this vlog film style video that we created. Um, it's kind of hard because you're always trying to time it just right when either the guys are in a certain mood or they're not wrenching too much in between races and such. And so... Um, but yeah, it's kind of fun. You just turn the camera on and you can kind of catch some of these uh, candid moments where they're kind of joking around the pits and stuff. It's nice to add in with the actual um, like interviews and more serious storyline of the vlog. But um, yeah, overall it was fun and definitely one of my favorite videos we have and tried to make it something that would keep guys interested in watching for a while. Yeah, I mean, you know, the focus and, you know, like we said, we've talked about before, there's always a little guess uh, of who's going to be competitive, who's going to be at the front that weekend. Uh, we have a lot of footage of Joe Bornhorse in this, a little bit of a, a, a great 2022 uh, breakout event for him, uh, ending up uh, getting second in the Nitro Buggy class. And he has a lot of funny and good moments in the video. I noticed people, uh, the viewers are commenting on already, stating that they, you know, they like his personality for this kind of thing. Yeah, Joe, it was, he was a lot of fun to work with because he, you know, I could turn the camera on and he, he just kept doing what he was doing. He didn't stop and get all like quiet and weird. And he didn't give me just like the normal, like cars are good, race is good, like answer. I mean, he was pretty like honest and genuine throughout the whole thing, which was really nice. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And it's fun to have someone else kind of in our vlogs. And so I was really happy to see how he was doing well that weekend and having success with his new program. And so I'm glad it kind of worked out for the sake of everyone involved really so you know one of the things we brought out there is we brought kind of a kind of a fun couple things you know we brought uh some some bodies out for ryan mayfield where we we put the silver in the back uh he ran in one practice run didn't make the full event he went back to his traditional white in the back the the night paint scheme we tried a a, a gray or a silver rear wing that was something we brought out to the race and then uh, our new recon tires which um, you know, we, we talked about in the video, you, you showed a, a, quite a bit of them in the video, uh, but we had some great performance with Joe getting a last round TQ with them and then Mayfield getting the overall TQ in e-buggy with them. So um, talk to us about kind of getting some of that footage and, you know, you got some nice close-ups. We had the cars out there and uh, we got the, you know, the drivers really delivered there late to get two TQs really with that tire. Yeah, um, it was important to me at this event to get really close up footage of the recon tire because it's new and it'd be nice for kind of later down the road when we put it on the market. Um, but what's always kind of fun is either to get footage like right after they come off the track after having success with the tire. And um, I always love like the night shots under the pit light kind of kind of adds a dramatic effect. But um, yeah, I think it's nice that we've already had a lot of early on success with the tire. You know, so, you know, we had, you know, went through a lot of different conditions out there between uh, the wet track, some dry in the afternoon, then it goes back, you know, these mains are kind of late at night. The guys, uh, for the most part, we went back to the reflex tire. Ryan ended up winning with, uh, you know, the good old green reflexes in buggy and in uh, the Truggy class. So, um, you know, those, those old comfort uh, uh, tires kind of come back and to serve a purpose and, and win these long mains. Yeah, the reflex tire was definitely a go-to. Um, and you'll actually hear Ryan at the end of the video say, like, when in doubt, reflex it out, because that's just, like, his go-to tire for any uh, A-scale situation, really. So, one, you know, we kind of prototyped a few things out there. We had these new tire bands. 
in inside that hold the uh, the inserts in place and you know uh, that are good for performance you know we have we've been uh, using these at you know here and there different events you know we have the you know we got a lot of these accessories now for tires which we got the inner sidewall support yeah. pieces we got these uh, uh, prototype bands that go on the inserts so uh, you know some of these things are making their appearances in our uh, race um, the tire guide uh, they're making some appearances in the videos stuff like that here and there uh, but that's something that's going to come out you know under our rm squared product product line uh, but uh, you know just kind of keeping with the theme of um, trying to improve a little bit at each one of these races yeah there's definitely a lot of options now for the tires like you're saying with all the various bands that we've been coming out with and i mean just on top of compounds and everything else and then yeah, you can kind of see a bit more of the new um, RM2 products in the inside look post we did for DNC because you can kind of see close up photos of his car and see some of those new rock guards and things like that. So, so we ended that race kind of on a high note with Ryan. You know, he's got a real um, he's got a real winning streak going here, especially in eight scale and, and nitro buggy in particular. A lot of wins, but you know, it's it happens fast in this, and you know that race is over. Uh, we're back home and we turn around and pretty soon you're flying out to the desert classic out to hobby action uh, and it was a well-attended event i, I want to say that they still had in the 300 entry mm -hmm. range which you know any of these events that you want to finish around a decent time 300 is a great number and uh, we had some you know dominating wins by dakota fenn uh, still running those smoothie twos that um, that were you know, trying to get out there for everybody. We're, we're trying to build up our inventory so we can get those out uh, for the mass release. And uh, it's really been the concentration since uh, the last few months trying to build the inventory on those items. That's why we've been delayed. But uh, on the track, they're really doing well. And it's, it's really making things easier for the 10 scale racers. Yeah, uh, Desert Classic was a great event for us. And of course, Dakota won both classes on Smoothie Twos, which was great. And um, that race was kind of interesting just because uh, both of the modified buggy classes went to A3. So that made it kind of, you know, for an interesting uh, result. But yeah, basically like Dakota and Ryan kind of battled out a lot in the two wheel drive race. And um, there's just kind of a small incident at the end in A3 where it could have really been either one of them that yeah. would have won the overall. But Dakota ended up taking it. And then same thing with four wheel drive went to the A3. And um, in four wheel drive, actually, I think there was three different drivers that won every single heat. So um made for an interesting weekend but yeah dakota came out on top yeah and you know it was nice to see ryan running well on his home track there at, at hobby action with the yokomo cars and you know spencer he was right up there in the mix mm -hmm. and and did a great job uh, in two-wheel drive and and had a shot at it but uh like you said in the end dakota and ryan kind of had that great last main and that kind of decided everything mm -hmm. so you know that's the desert classic kind of in a nutshell you know we're moving through we're so cruising. quickly it happened quick i mean we we turned around uh, you know, Hannah, we get back on a Monday, you're turning around, probably going out there on a Wednesday. So, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's happening quick, but we had a little bit of a, a little break in there, not much, but then we rolling into the, the fuel nationals, which yeah. is a, um, an odd timing for us because traditionally we're, uh, accustomed to this event being in June and now they, they moved it, uh, to March because of the weather in Arizona, which was a good idea. The weather was beautiful. And that really made for a great uh, race, but we've never been to this track before us. So it was kind of an all new track experience, location experience. Uh, but, um, you know, again, we had uh, Dakota Fenn showing up uh, big time as he has been, uh, you know, the last couple of years. And then again, Ryan Mayfield kind of working his way up into contention and really giving Dakota everything that he wanted and really in both classes. Yeah, the field nationals was exciting to see Dakota win both classes. And I think after DNC, like, he was really, like, on it for field nationals, which was exciting. And this was his first time winning Nitro Buggy, right? Mm -hmm. Had a national title. So, um, yeah, and that track was kind of interesting. The surface was just kind of different than a lot of tracks we go to. It was really rocky. Um, but it kind of, I mean, to me, it made for an interesting event, made it different. And it's kind of nice to go to different tracks and switch things up every once in a while. Yeah, Tim Lime kind of took on the challenge there, mm -hmm. and and it wasn't easy, you know, to to incorporate a lot of these things into the to the program and get the surface um, the way he wanted it for the racing. You know, it was really rocky. It is Arizona, 
and those and you can hear when you know when we're out there listening and, and watching the cars you can hear these rocks against the cars and the chassis and um, you know it's, it's making it a threat to where sometimes the rocks bounce in the car that sometimes it causes the cars to flame out so that was a big factor and uh, the drivers finishing a 60 minute main was a concern but again Dakota I think put in his best 60 minute main ever and then Ryan kind of gave it you know gave him all he really could handle and then uh, Mason Fuller kind of really showing what he was capable of getting up on the podium. Yeah, it's exciting to see Mason kind of um, up and coming onto the the scene now. And um, yeah, I think it was Nitro Buggy that he was I mean, battling hard there for that third place spot for a bit. And he made some really cool passes and um, yeah, he made it happen. So it's exciting to see him move so, it up. So I'd say out of a lot of the different tracks so far, the, the recon tire worked really well there at the Roar Nats. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what Dakota won both classes on run a little harder tire out there but uh, you know 45 minute main 60 minute main and buggy and it looked really good so uh kind of moving on you know we 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 jump back then we head back to vegas now we're running carpet off-road spencer came with us out there uh, he packed it up and then we had brock champlin and blake champlin kind of waiting on us mm-hmm. uh, along with some new j concepts drivers like rob gillespie and other uh, new j concepts guys out there and uh, running some carpet i got out on the track ran some 40 plus against joe pillars and uh, brock was on his game out there as you would expect on the carpet with the schumacher cars uh, we all were running the fuzz bite tires uh, that was something we weren't using there the year before now it seems like that's really kind of working out as being our hot tire on carpet. And, uh, you know, Spencer, I think, had a great weekend. He was in the contention to uh, be a winner in two-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive, he had some bad luck and kind of, you know, got that fixed at the end. But in two-wheel was really where he put the pressure on Brock and it went to an A3. Yeah, the A3 was exciting. I mean, they kind of swapped the lead a few times during that race. And kind of in the last, I think, maybe two minutes, Brock was able to get a pass on Spencer and, and take the overall win. And which was exciting for him. Brock told me that was his first time winning both mod classes at this event. So that was kind of a big deal to him, which was exciting to see him do that. Yeah, it was. I mean, we got another couple carpet races coming up at uh, Northwest Hobbies in, uh, you know, in, you know, Oregon. And so, you know, Brock will be up there, Blake, and they'll be ready to roll once again on the carpet. So um, that's our NCTS event there um, at 702. And then, of course, at Northwest. So rolling on we did the pmb recently that's probably our most recent uh event that we attended and hannah you made the drive up with paul Mm -hmm. Uh, we had lee out there in the van julian julian's mom so we had a full crew and once again uh biggest race uh i think on record over a thousand entries at pmb and you know and dnc was 950 something 970 so you know this was a little over a thousand but um you know once again we had Dakota really kind of coming alive in the in the truck class this time, and then uh, Mayfield coming alive in the pro buggy class, and then Mason Fuller getting that win in a pro e buggy. But you know you kind of documented a lot of this event as it was going on. You videoed the mains. Um, this is the event with the Joker Lane. Yep. You're allowed the Joker Lane every uh, ten minutes. You can run a Joker lap. So. Um, Talk to us a little bit about watching from that standpoint. A lot of cars on the track, 18 cars or something. Mm-hmm. Then you're hitting these joker laps. I mean, it's trying to hard. It's kind of hard to keep up with what's going on. Yeah, when I'm filming the mains of this event, it's, you know, Paul's like staying next to me with live RC up. And, you know, he's kind of helping me keep track because when you are filming, you're focusing on those top three. And it's really hard to focus on anyone else because at any given time, like someone else takes the joker lane and like pops up there. And so you're trying to make sure you're keeping like an accurate video going for everyone. But yeah, I mean, the joker lane... It's kind of fun because it makes it just adds a different element to the event and um, makes things interesting. But yeah, it was nice to see everyone do well and Mayfield Dakota. I think they ran Reflex and Mason Fuller ran Rehab for their wins for each one one class. So yeah, I mean it's a great variety. Again, going back to the win and doubt, Reflex it out <laughs> for Dakota and Mayfield. But then Mason Fuller went with the Rehabs, and we couldn't be happier that having that success on multiple patterns of tires. Yeah. So um, next up. Uh, we are kind of regrouping here. We're going to do another set of events. Uh, we have the Spring uh, Indoor Nationals at Adrenaline RC, which is a track you're familiar with. And then we're going to go straight back out to uh, the Silver State Nitro Challenge in Vegas for what I'm predicting is another 1,000-entry race. So I guess the question is, are you ready to go? And uh, <laughs> what are you uh, looking to expect at some of these tracks here? 
Yeah, I think I'm ready to go after spending uh, two weeks here and kind of ready to get back out there in the field. And so I'm looking forward to doing some 10 scale and uh, Silver State. And it'd be nice to go to Adrenaline, of course. That's my home track where my family is. And so it'd be nice to be home. And uh, yeah, and Silver State will be a fun, fun race as well. And it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top. All right. Well, thanks for joining us again. Great work with everything at the events. Uh, thanks for being here. And uh, again, like, subscribe, uh, check us out on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, we appreciate everybody watching, and uh, we'll see you at the races. Bye.